Welcome to Chapter 1, Lesson 4. This is page 39 in your book, and the ratio tables is the topic of the lesson. The essential question is how do you use equivalent rates in the real world? Vocabulary ratio table, equivalent ratios, and scaling. All right, let's get started. A punch recipe uses one container of soda and three containers of juice to make one batch of punch. Draw red counters to show the number of containers of soda. Okay, so red for soda. I'm just going to put a little red over here so I remember. And draw yellow counters to show the number of containers of juice. Okay, so juice, and it's supposed to be yellow, so I'll just use my highlighter. Okay, so the so number of containers of juice needed to make two batches of punch. So they want us to find out two batches of punch. Okay, well one batch, let's just model one batch. One batch would be one container of soda and three containers of juice. Okay, so now they want two batches or two groups. Okay, so my first. Okay, so now there'll be two sodas. And my same batch, that's for one, that's for two. All right, so now I have sodas. I have two, and juices, I have six, two and six. Okay, hmm, if I was gonna put that in simplest form, because remember we always put things in simplest form, what would it be? Well, I'd need to divide by two and divide by two, which would give me one third, okay. Now number two, it says draw red counters to show the numbers of containers of soda. Okay, so still the same. And yellow to show the numbers, containers of juice for three batches. So the new information here is three batches. Okay, so now I have three batches. So those are my sodas. And these are my juices. It's one batch, two batch and three batch. I'll just make them yellow. Okay, so this is three batches. So now sodas three and juices is nine. Okay, let's imagine we're putting that in simplest form. Divide by three and divide by three. Give us one third. Interesting. It says, find the ratio in simplest form, oh, we did that already, of soda to juice needed for one, two, and three batches. So we did that already. Well, we'll do the first one. This is one soda to three juices. So it was one. One batch was one-third. Two batches was one-third. And three batches was one-third. What do you notice? The ratio stays the same. Interesting, the ratio stays the same. Our standards of mathematical practice, which one do you think that we used? I'm going to leave it up to you to decide and I'll be interested to see what you pick in class. Okay, remember, if I write it, you write it. So you should have all this information written on this page. Okay, let's flip over to page 40. Okay, equivalent ratios. So the quantities in the opening activity can be organized into a table. 
Okay, so they've made it. This tape sh table is called a ratio table because the columns are filled with parts of numbers that have the same ratio. So remember, we have one soda, three juices, two sodas, six juices, three sodas, nine juices. Okay, the ratio stays the same. R equivalent ratios express the same relationship between frac quantities. Okay, let's look at the example problems now. And they're going to use the tables. To make yellow icing, you mix six drops, six drops, so I wrote that over here, six drops of yellow food coloring. Okay, so that's yellow. With one cup of white icing. How much yellow food coloring should you mix with five cups of white icing to get the same shade? So they've done our ratio here that we wrote six to one. They put it in the table six to one. Now it wants to know five cups of white icing. So they've put in the five here. Now how do you get from one to five? Well you multiply by five like they're showing you here. Multiply by five and of course what you do to one part of the ratio, you do to the other. So 6 times 5 is 30. So add 30 drops of yellow food coloring to 5 cups of icing. So this is how you would write it in a sentence. Okay. All right, let's look at the next one. In a recent year, Joey Chestnut won a hot dog eating contest by eating nearly 66 hot dogs. Ew. Okay, so 66 hot dogs in 12 minutes. I always just write the ratio first so I know what I'm talking about. And they did the same. They just put it in the table. Hot dogs and time. If he ate at a constant rate, that means stayed the same, determine about how many hot dogs he ate every two minutes. Okay, so they want to get to two. So they've done a middle step where they divided by two and divided by two and got 33 over six, and then they changed to dividing by three. I probably would have just thought, okay, I'm going from two to 12. I should divide by six and then divide by six. 66 divided by six is 11. So he would eat 11 hot dogs in two minutes. Okay, so now these are the times where you're going to do this on your own. So I'll help you get started, and then when you come to class, you should have the answers written right here. A patient receives one liter of IV, so they wrote it here, every eight hours, and they wrote it here. At that rate, find how many hours it will take to receive four liters. Okay, so they went up to four, so they've multiplied by four, so you need to do the same here to find out what this answer is. So write it in here, but also write it over in A, and make sure you label it your units. How many hours? So hours should be hours. Okay, to make cranberry jam, you need 12 cups of sugar, so they have it here, for every 16 cups of cranberries. Find the amount of sugar needed for four cups of cranberries. Okay, so this time they're going down. They're going down, so they're dividing by four. So over here you should be dividing by four to get an answer. So write it in here and write it here. Amount of sugar. So you need to write the units, sugar. Okay, so you have this in class. I'll check it. Using scaling. Multiply or divide two related quantities by the same numbers called scaling. Okay, here's the important part. Sometimes you may need to scale back and then scale forward to find an equivalent ratio. So let's see what they mean. Cans of corn are on sale at 10 for $4. Find the cost of 15. Okay, well this is 
10 to 4, and now we're trying to get to 15, right? But, you know, there's just not any easy way to get from 10 to 15. 10 times nothing, you know, and we're trying to get here. So what they're going to do is scale. This is what they're talking about, scaling. So let's find something else. 10 and 5 both have a common factor here of 5. Okay, so in the example, 5. So if we take this down to 5, you're dividing by 2. Divide by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So you're taking it down to 5 over 2. Now, because 15 and 5 work well together, you can use this one, the smaller ratio that you scaled to, to get back here. So now you can use that to get to 15 times 3. And do the same top and bottom, so times 3, which gives you 6, right? 6. So in this box, it would be 6. So 15 cans of corn would cost $6, okay? So that was scaling. You had to go down and then back up again. Let's try it in this one. Joe mows lawns during his summer vacation to earn money. He took 14 hours last week to mow eight lawns, so 14 and eight. At this rate, how many lawns could he mow in 49? Okay, so again, you have 14 and eight and you're trying to get to 49, okay? But 49, 14, there's not an easy way to get to 49, so we're gonna scale. Pick a common factor. It doesn't even have to be the greatest common factor, just a common factor, seven. I know seven works with both 14, and it works with 49. To go from 14 to seven, divide by seven, excuse me, divide by 2. So we have to divide by 2, which is 4. Okay, now we can use this to scale back up. How do we get to 49 times 7? Do the same top and bottom times 7, which is 28. Okay, so now we found our answer. We had to use scaling. Okay, so I should see this work in your book. One more. I got it. A child's height measures 105 centimeters. Estimate her height in inches. Okay, so they gave us the equivalent. They said 25 centimeters is the same as 10 inches. Okay, so 25 and 105 don't really work together, right? But what about 5? They can both go with five, right? So you need to scale down to five. Okay, somehow scale down to five. You have to decide what to do here. Divide by something, divide by something. And then use this to scale back up to 105 to find this answer. find what will go in these boxes. Okay, so bring your answers to class. Just one more example. On her vacation, Layla, Leia exchanged 50 American dollars and received 60 back. Use a ratio table to find how many Canadian dollars she would receive for 20. Okay, so we know 60 and 50, and we know 20. So they're scaling down to 5. Okay, so divide by 10, divide by 10, which gives you 6. And then from 5 to 20, so you have to multiply by 4, and then multiply by 4 to get 24 Canadian or 20 American. And this is how to write the sentence. Okay, we'll keep working on these examples in class. I'll see you then.